What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we have something really boring but really cool to talk about. And it's one of those things that has evaded truth and has been a part of myth for literal centuries, and that is, where does standard gauge come from? Well, finally today, there's some decent proof that I've finally found, thanks to my good friend Leighton. He, he found it, I didn't find it. But he sent this document over to me and it was like, Oh, that's way less interesting than I thought it would be, and that makes way too much sense. So every story you've probably heard about where standard gauge for trains comes from is probably wrong. Commonly told that it's the width of two horses' butts, because it was horse-drawn carriages first that rode on the rails. Uh, some people said that thought they were a little bit more educated said, well, you know, it was four foot eight inches. Uh, and then when they started to get curves going on, they ran into problems. So they added that extra half inch to get four foot eight and a half inches or 56 and a half inches to get the final standard gauge. And, and that's what Stevenson did back in Britain back in the day. Well, just to prove how long this myth has been around and those falsities have been around, <laughs> posted today that Leighton sent to me, somebody had found a 1892 copy of the GWR magazine, which has an excerpt from The Engineer, which was a publication back in the 1800s about railroading. And there's a gentleman who is recalling the account of where standard gauge comes from in 1867, calling out how people have it wrong. The gentleman is Mr. Clement E. Stretton, CE of Leicester in Britain. He says in 1867, he found a large diagram dated 1830 and several letters that were owned by George Stevenson, Stevenson's rocket, all that sort of stuff. And it showed the origin of standard gauge. The diagram originally shows from Newcastle upon Tyne from 1630, a diagram showing five foot wide pieces of wood with more wood laid on top of them for a plate way. So you had two pieces of wood and then the sleepers that the Brits call them or the ties that we call them in America across, making it five feet all that way. Then there's another one at Colebrookdale, 1767, also with an outside width of five feet. So this is making a little bit more sense than that four foot eight and a half. We're starting from five feet. That's a round number. It doesn't involve a half inch. Okay. In 1789, a man named Jessup introduces having a rail and flanged wheel at Loughborough in Britain. He kept with the five foot tie width and he had rails that were an inch and three quarters wide which put the gauge at four foot, eight and a half inches. Therefore, on the outside of the ties, outside of the rail spacing, you had five foot, but you had standard gauge right in the middle. And so that's where standard gauge begins, but why does it become standard? Well, when the Liverpool and Manchester and Leicester and Swannington railways started to use rails that were a little bit wider, two and a quarter inch, heavier rail profile, they had to increase the spacing on the outside, what they then called the gauge to five foot one, because they're measuring on the outside because they didn't realize what was going to come. No one knew what railroading was going to turn into. They didn't have gauge as a concept yet. So they just measured the width of the ties. So they went to five foot one to keep the wheel spacing the same at the four foot eight and a half inches. When the Leicester and Swannington railway was laid in 1831, 1832, the plate layers gauges only measured out that five foot one, the exterior dimension. It wasn't until 1843, when we're getting into wider and wider rail, that they come up with the first inside gauges that truly gives us four foot eight and a half as standard gauge. In the letters that George Stephenson has, there's a letter from George Stephenson to John Ellis as a reply to a question about what gauge should they use. Stevenson said, make them all the same width, though they may be a long way apart now, depend upon it that they will all be joined together someday. 
he knew what was going on. I would uh, I'd love to know what he would think of modern day railroading and how everything is connected and, and interconnected both in the UK, uh, in Europe, and across America. I mean, that concept and the fact that we're still using this wacky gauge that came from five foot wide ties and we were measuring the wrong side of the rail because we didn't know yet. Uh, it's a, it's like a silly thing, and, and it feels a little dull, and it's historical and whatever, but how long has it just been common knowledge that, oh, it's the width of two horses' butt, or, oh, the, it's that extra half inch that they had to add? Apparently, since even 1867, that, that this has been wrong, that the common knowledge about this has just been utterly wrong. And so when Leighton sent this to me today, I was like, Oh my god, I gotta make a video about this. Pe people need to know this. Yes, it's kind of dull. But there you go. That's standard gauge. Five foot minus the two rails. Just that simple. Thanks for watching.